Hey guys, welcome to ASM Learning. In this series of lecture, we are going to discuss about the different topics related to operating systems of subject CS 8493, which covers under the regulation 2017 of University Chennai. In this video, we are going to see about the fifth unit, which completely deals with the case study of three major operating system. Number one the Linux operating system, number two, the mobile operating system which covers both Android and iOS. Let's get into the topic. The first one to be covered is the Linux system. Under this, we are going to see about the Linux history, the design principles, the kernel modules, the process management, the scheduling, what are the memory management, the file systems, I.O. and I.P.C. The first one is Linux history. So the Linux is a modern free operating system. So which derives from the earlier Unix version. And this Linux was developed in the year 1991 by Linus Torvalds. The main objective of this Linux operating system is to make sure that it, it is compatible with the Unix operating system. And it has been released as an open source. So what do you mean by an open source? So the code is made available and it is developed by the large community developers. It's a collaborative work. So here they have kept the core Linux operating system as the kernel. So the kernel is the original part. And it has been developed by the community developers as said earlier. So the Linux community has developed and design this operating system to run efficiently and reliably on all PC hardware and not only in that it also able to run on a variety of other platforms as said earlier since it was developed by the community of developers it has no proprietary code so what do you mean by a proprietary code so no one could able to own the copyright of this Linux version and the, there are several distributions of Linux which includes the kernel and different application programs and management tools. The Linux kernel. So there are different versions of Linux kernel available. The initial version was developed in the year 1991 and it was named as version 0.01. .01. So it has been developed without any networking support. So what do you mean by networking support? It could not be able to communicate over internet. The operating system has no support to communicate over internet. And it runs only on the 80386 compatible Intel processor and limited device drive support that is supported only the Minix file system. So there is only some limited device drive support. And the next version is version 1.0 which was been developed in the year 1994 which comes with some basic TCP IP networking protocol support and BSD. What is BSD? BSD is a Berkeley standard distribution. So it is a research team for open source and it also has some extended support of device driver and SCSI and also has some hardware support. And next to this is version 1.2 which has been released in the year 1995 and it is exclusively the PC only Linux kernel. The kernels often comes with several versions and these versions has been classified as odd versions number and even version numbers. The odd version numbers are mainly called as the development kernels and the even version numbers are called as the production kernels. So the next one is Linux 2.0. This version Linux 2.0 has been released in the year 1996 with two major capabilities number one is multiple architecture and number two is the support for multiprocessor architecture and not only this it also come with some improved memory management code and improved tcp ip performance and some support for some internal kernel threads so the next is version 2.4 and version 2.6 so this version 2.4 and 2.6 supports smp journaling file system preemptive kernel 
So what do you mean by this journaling file system? In case if our operating system has overcome with some failure, it faces some power failure and there, there may be some inconsistencies. So in order to overcome this inconsistencies, there is a special file that could be able to overcome these inconsistencies and that special file is called as the journaling file system. And next is the version 3.0 which has been released in the year 2011. So it is almost 20 years later from the release of the initial version. So this version 3.0 supports virtualization and it has also some improved memory management. It also includes some page write back facility and new completely fair scheduler. And the next one is the Linux system. The Linux uses many tools developed by as a part of Berkeley's operating system, BSD operating system. So the main system libraries were started by GNU project with the improvements provided by the Linux community. The Linux system is maintained by a loose network of developers. As we have said earlier, it is a collaborative work. Okay, It is a collaborative work where several community developers work together over internet with a small number of public FTP sites. The next, the file system hierarchy standard, it is a document that is maintained by the Linux community to ensure compatibility across the various system components. It specifies the overall layout of the standard Linux file system and it also determines under which directory names, configuration files, libraries, system binaries and runtime data files should be stored. And next comes the Linux distributions. What do you mean by distributions? The distributions can also be called as the packages, a set of packages that includes the basic Linux system, the system installation and management utilities, and not only that, and it also includes some ready to install packages for accessing the common Unix tools. Initially, the first distributions managed these packages by simply providing a means of unpacking all the files into the appropriate place. So you have to unpack as like you are uh, extracting the files from the zip folder. Okay, You have to unpack all the files into the appropriate places and in modern distributions it includes advanced package management and in earlier distributions it includes some packages like Red Hat, Debian, Canonical and the SUSC. So what do you mean by this SUSC? This, it should be pronounced as software and systems development. The next is the design principles. A Linux is a multi-user, preemptive multitasking system with a full set of Unix compatible tools. The file system of this Linux, it lends support to the traditional Unix semantics and not only that, it thoroughly implements the standard Unix networking model. The main objective of this Linux version is to provide the improvised speed and improved efficiency. This Linux is designed to be compliant with the relevant POSIX documents. What do you mean by POSIX? Just like a standard as like ISO and IEEE. So for this Linux operating system there is a standard called POSIX and the different distributions of packages must comply with this POSIX standard. So at least two distributions must comply with this POSIX certification. And this version supports pthreads and a subset of POSIX real-time process control. The Linux programming interface also supports to the SVR4 Unix semantics rather than the BSD behavior. Now we can see about the components of the Linux operating system. So there are different components and it has been classified into four different layers. The layer 1 is of loadable kernel modules and layer 2 is the Linux kernel, the actual kernel part and layer 3 is the system shared libraries and layer 4 is the user mode okay, which compromises of different system management programs, the user processes, user utility programs and compilers. So all this comes under the application programs that could be able to run on your operating system. So all these application programs with the help of this library files will be accessing your Linux kernel. Okay. 
So this entire components can be broadly classified into user mode and the kernel mode. So the, the program that runs under user mode cannot be able to have a direct access to the hardware, computer hardware. So a context switch will take place. So what do you mean by context switch? Whenever a user program wants to access the hardware, it will be switching its control to the kernel mode. So now with this kernel mode, it can able to directly access the system hardware. So with this, we can conclude what are the things that we have seen so far. So under Linux operating system, we have discussed about the Linux history, the different versions that comes under the Linux and from where it was been initially originated. And then comes the several design principles of the Linux operating system. Thank you. You can see the rest of the topics in the upcoming videos.